All right, so I've put together a list of mistakes that new programmers tend to make, and this is so that you can avoid making these mistakes and save a lot of time and energy. So this is essentially like the video that I wish I would have had when I got started. All right, so let's get into it. And I also highly recommend just sticking around to the end of the video, not only because it helps me out with this video, but also because I've actually put a lot of effort into trying to make the best list possible of the most useful mistakes that I can find that I think will actually help you a lot and save you a lot of time and effort. So yeah, let's get into it with mistake number one, which is skipping the basics. So at the start, it's really easy to just wanna get straight into building the project that you actually wanna build and then skip past the fundamentals and the basics of programming. Don't do this. The fundamentals are variables, classes, methods, and flow of control. If you don't know how these things work, then spend some time learning the basics of how to use each of them properly. This is one of those things where if you put in a little bit of effort, it will have outsized returns. It's high ROI to learn this because it will equip you with the ability to better design the programs that you write, which will allow you to build things better and faster. It will also give you a fundamental understanding of how things work in programming, which will allow you to understand error messages that come up and also to understand how the tools that you use actually work. You most likely only need to spend a couple hours on this and it will save you so many hours. So don't skip the basics. The next mistake that most new programmers tend to make is going with the first solution that you find to a problem. I did this and it's only like recently that I started implementing like a protocol to try to avoid this. And since implementing that, I know that I've saved countless hours of just struggling with trying to solve different things. And the protocol is dead simple. It's essentially just find at least three ways of doing something before committing. What usually would happen is that I would come up with an idea to build something and then I would Google how to do it and then read the first best thing that I found and start using it. However, for some reason, this first way of doing something almost always turns out not to work. Whether it's because the library is no longer supported or because it's not compatible with the device I'm using or the language that I'm programming in, every time, almost without fail, this first approach is shithouse. So nowadays I put a lot more emphasis on that first research part of the project and I try to be really careful about committing to a specific tool or a specific solution because there's nothing worse than spending like 12 hours or even several days working on something only to find out that the error that you're getting is something that you can't solve and then you have to start all over from scratch. Don't be me, do your research. The next mistake that I see people making is close to the previous one, but also not. And that is not using Git properly. Git is a source control system. And so what does that mean? It has a ton of great things about it, but what it means for you is that it gives you a way of unfucking up your code. This is not the main feature, but it is one of the features that I think is most useful for new programmers. And essentially what you can do with Git is it allows you to save your code. So that means that if you ever fuck up, that you can basically just go back to a time before you fucked up. This is very useful for new programmers since in the beginning we all tend to make mistakes and in the beginning it can be really difficult to keep track of what you changed and which change actually broke your code. Git, if used properly, will allow you to go back to where the code was working so that you can try it again. So learn how to create proper commits to GitHub and you'll again save yourself a ton of time. All right, so now I'd just like to say that I spend a lot of time and I work really hard to find sponsors that I think that you guys will actually find useful. And today's sponsor, AppSumo, is a perfect example of that. AppSumo is the number one digital marketplace where you can get amazing discounts on products to help you and your business. Maybe you've heard of companies like Sapier, Evernote, and MailChimp. And they actually first appeared on AppSumo over a decade ago. And AppSumo believes that the tools that you need to run your business shouldn't put you out of business. And most of their deals are for life, meaning that you pay once and that software is yours forever. And this is super useful 
useful for you both as a person and if you're starting a business because a lot of times these business versions of apps offer a lot of really useful features. You might recognize the fact that pretty much every business person recommends getting an email list and MailChimp is one of the most used platforms for this. But in order to use it, you need to pay a certain amount depending on how many people are on your list. So getting any sort of discount on a product or service like that with AppSumo will be super helpful for you. Their products will save you thousands of dollars, but to sweeten the deal even more, they've thrown in an extra 10% off your first purchase for the first 500 of you guys that purchase through the link in the description. So if you're looking for great tools to help you and your business, hit the link in the description below and check out AppSumo. And don't forget, you get 10% off your first purchase if you're one of the first 500 to hit that link or use my code CAL at checkout. All right, let's keep going with mistake number three, which is to not use comments. In the beginning, commenting your code seems to have no actual purpose, which sort of makes sense because in the beginning, when you're looking at your code, you can feel like, well, I can see what this code is doing. So why do I need to also write a comment explaining what it's doing when I can just see it? And that sort of makes sense, but there are particular cases when that is actually super useful. And there are three ways that we tend to use comments in our programming. The first way is my favorite, which is to simply write out what you want to do with comments. This can be a very good way to visualize and understand how to do something that you're unsure about how to do. It allows you to write out how you think you can do that thing in natural language instead of with code. A lot of times this can be really useful in helping you understand how to write complex functions. The second way that we can use comments is to help us remember what to actually do. Maybe there's a problem somewhere in the code, but you don't have time to fix it right now. You can just write a simple comment that will help you remember where that thing was that you needed to fix. It can also help you remember that there was something that you needed to fix. The third way that we can use comments is to make it easier for you and for others to understand what your code is actually doing. Maybe you end up writing a complex function in your code and then three months later that function presents an error. You go back to look at it, but it's a mess of variables, for loops, function calls that you really cannot decrypt. In this case, it's really useful to have a little explanation that tells you what's going on. It saves you the time that it would take to actually figure out what's happening. It will also allow you to find the right part of your code really easily. Imagine a project with hundreds of files and thousands of lines of code. If there are no comments, then it will be true detective work to find what you're looking for. The way that I like to do this, and I'm not perfect, so I often forget, but the way that I like to do it is that before I write a function, I like to write a comment that explains what the function is supposed to do. And this not only helps me write more and better comments, but it also helps me avoid the next mistake that new programmers make. Not limiting function sizes properly. Essentially, a function should do one thing. There's a saying that goes, the secret of being successful, no, the, the secret to success in writing code is to write functions that only do one, no, the secret of success in writing code is to write functions that only have one purpose. This may or may not be an actual quote, but it illustrates the point perfectly, which is that if you describe what your function does, you should be able to do it without using and or or. Writing comments before actually writing my functions really helped me write a lot better code and also faster code because I've already written out what this function is supposed to do. So I know that what it's supposed to do and I also know what it's not supposed to do. So that means that all that's left is just implementing it. The next mistake that new programmers make is not using descriptive naming conventions. This is really easy to forget, especially when you're like in the flow of writing your code and you're just about to solve that problem that you've been working on all day. All that you need to do is just create an extra variable somewhere or an extra function. And in those sort of moments, it's really easy to just forego these like proper naming conventions because you can't really be bothered to spend time thinking about what a good variable name would be. This happens a lot and usually you end up with code that has a lot of these variables and functions that are named undescriptive things like hello one or calculate. And when you go back to it, it's difficult to see what that function is actually calculating. It would be way better to name it calculate my IQ now you know what it's actually going to do. And it also helps you in commenting your code because with the descriptive function names, you might not need to write comments explaining what the function does since it's already in the name. Use descriptive names. Now for the final mistake that I think will save you a lot of time, and that is not planning out your code. 
In school, we actually had an entire course just teaching how to write different requirements for software. And I've been using that ever since, although probably not in like the proper way of doing it, probably not close to the proper way, but that doesn't really matter since the idea is just that you write out a plan of some kind that makes sense to you. And so here are some questions that I like to consider before starting a project. What am I building? This is just to be clear about what it is that I'm actually going to build. Not always a question that makes sense to literally write down an answer to, but sometimes it helps with clarity. What do I need to build? What are the parts of the project that I'm building? Do I need to build a database, login screen, web scraper, etc.? What do I need to build this? For the parts that I need to build, what do I need in order to build those parts? Library, software, APIs, etc. How do I build these things? How do I use the things that I need in order to build the parts that I need to build? There are of course other questions that you can ask and this is just an example of showing how I like to think about these things when starting a project. So you can and should come up with your own questions to also add to this. But don't over plan. All you want to do is create a rough structure for how to do things with the idea being to limit unknowns. You want to get an idea of all the parts that you need to build and all the tools that you need to use before you start. This prevents you from spending days or weeks building something and creating an architecture that you later realize cannot be used and that you end up having to redo from scratch. Planning can really help you avoid those motivation draining mistakes. All right, so that's it. And uh, I really hope that you got something out of this video and that these tips will help you save time and just help you on your journey. And uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And uh, yeah, I hope I'll see you in the next one.